Hi guys, welcome to the second session. If I'm audible and visible, please send your thumbs up in the chat box. Hi guys, welcome to the second session. If I'm audible, please send your thumbs up in the chat box. So let's start. Guys, Prep Ladder is launching. Prep Ladder is launching Champions Exam INICT. That's the biggest mock exam for INICT May 2024. It will start on 17th. So it is from 17th to 21st of April 2024. So why you should join this because latest exam pattern will be followed in this champions exam and there will be four sections of 50 questions each and the duration of exam will be 45 minutes. It should be taken by 90% of INI CT main 24 aspirants. So you can gauge your performance and address your weak areas, cover all important past year topics and experience the real exam simulation. So register now, it's absolutely free. Okay, so let's start the questions. Tell me guys, what is the correct answer for this question? Yes, a 60 years old male during his routine health checkup was found to have mass in right kidney. So problem, there was mass in right kidney which was later found to be RCC, renal cell carcinoma. Which of the following is not the component of too late triad? associated with RCC, renal cell carcinoma. Easy question. Tell me guys, what's the correct answer? Yes. So everybody is correct. You know, what are the components of triad for RCC? It is mass pain hematuria, right? And it is seen only in 10% patients, seen only in 10% patients who are having advanced disease. Only 10% patients who are having advanced disease. So that's why what is the name of this triad? It is too late. So we tell the patient that it's too late if this triad is there. So what is the name? This is known as too late triad. Too late triad. Okay. Too late triad for RCC. So one question. Out of these three, tell me what is the most common manifestation of RCC? Most common symptom of RCC. Tell me guys. What is the most common symptom of RCC? You know. What is the most common symptom? <coughs> guys, tell me. Most common symptom for RCC, yes, hematuria, yes, MTG, very good, Vishnu Priya, yes, it is hematuria. So this is the most common symptom. So another question for you guys that there is Wilms tumor or nephroblastoma. So in Wilms tumor also there is mass. In Wilms tumor also there is hematuria, right? At the place of pain, what is there? Tell me, what is the triad of Wilms tumor, guys? Tell me. Triad of Wilms tumor, there is mass, there is hematuria. What is the third component? Mass, hematuria, what is the third component? Tell me. Third component, fever, very good. Vishnu Priya, very good, it is fever. So at the place of pain, in Wilms tumor, there is fever. So you have to remember both the triad for Wilms tumor and the triad for RCC. The triad for RCC, that is known as too late triad. It is known as too late triad. Clear guys? Next question. See this, it's very, very easy. <clears throat> a patient presented to emergency with claudication of calf muscles, numbness in thigh with importance. Most characteristic feature here. Claudication in calf, numbness in thigh and importance. Image shows gangrene of foot. Here you can see there is involvement of this middle toe. Which artery is involved? Easy question for guys. Tell me which artery is involved. Easy question, which artery is involved? Yes. So easy question. Whenever patient is having impotence because of arterial obstruction or arterial occlusion, can anybody tell me? What is the name of this syndrome? Erectile dysfunction or impotence because of arterial occlusion. Can anybody tell me? What is the name? Dheeraj Pandey. Very good. Lirich syndrome. It is not lyrics, Dheeraj, it is Lerich, very good, Lerich syndrome, clear guys? So it is Lerich syndrome. So whenever there is importance, you know, the internal iliac is going to supply the pelvic organs, right? It means the obstruction must be above internal iliac, where exactly? See this, in this image you can see, this is the aorta, this is the aortic bifurcation, internal iliac. This is external iliac. So whenever obstruction is at aortoiliac bifurcation, 
whenever there is obstruction at aorto iliac bifurcation these patients will be having what erectile dysfunction so that is Lerich syndrome clear guys erectile dysfunction Lerich syndrome why because impaired blood flow to the pelvic organs mainly the penis and apart from that the patient will be having claudication in gluteal region claudication in thigh claudication in calf and foot and there will be ischemia distal to obstruction so there might be what gangrene in the foot clear so what is the correct answer guys just remember one thing whenever patient is having impotence because of arterial occlusion obviously the obstruction is at the level of aorto iliac bifurcation clear so correct answer for this question is a clear it is a okay guys majority of you mark the correct answer we are expecting this question in exam this is one of the favorite topic of aims people next easy question again it's related tell me guys what's the correct answer young male underwent lumbar sympathectomy and bilateral l1 ganglias were removed what will be the most common side effect guys tell me easy question most common side effect yes pranav shivanya priya dhiraj pande ani entilia very good borodin very good very good ravi soni very nice very good so majority of you are correct guys now see lumbar sympathectomy is done in which condition tell me in which condition we perform lumbar sympathectomy yes burgess disease what is the indication in burgess disease mainly in burgess disease what is the indication the patients who are having rest pain the patients who are having rest pain the patients who are having rest pain clear so the patients who are having rest pain okay in that we receive it right guys clear now in lumbar sympathectomy what we do what is done in lumbar sympathectomy tell me which sympathetic ganglias are removed guys tell me which sympathetic ganglias are removed there are l1 to l5 which sympathetic ganglia are removed i'm waiting for your reply which sympathetic ganglias are removed in lumbar sympathectomy yes l1 to l4 very good if you are performing unilateral lumbar sympathectomy we remove l1 to l4 easy question now why unilateral l1 to l4 and if you are performing bilateral lumbar sympathectomy in that case at least l1 should be spared at least l1 should be spared on one side question why l1 should be spared on one side question why see it's very easy to understand the retrograde ejaculation have a look this is the bladder okay this is the prostate this is the urethra this is the testis this is the epididymis see the physiology here there is internal urinary sphincter this internal urethral sphincter or urinary sphincter it is under sympathetic ganglia which one l1 you know erection is because of stimulation of parasympathetic system ejaculation is because of sympathetic system right so whenever there is ejaculation this l1 is under sympathetic control what happens at the time of ejaculation this sphincter is closed and the semen goes outside the urethra suppose this sphincter is not closed properly if sphincter is injured like in patient of turp transurethral resection of prostate in sphincter is injured that's why most common complication of turp that is retrograde ejaculation why what happens the semen enters the bladder so this is retrograde ejaculation if you use alpha blockers alpha blockers are smooth muscle relaxant this sphincter is smooth muscle so it is relaxed again semen enters the bladder retrograde ejaculation and third cause related to surgery if you perform bilateral lumbar sympathectomy if you perform bilateral lumbar sympathectomy if l1 is not spared again what will happen again there will be retrograde ejaculation clear guys so what is the correct answer the most common side effect if bilateral l1 are removed retrograde ejaculation clear guys so b it is b next nowadays 
in questions related to burns they give a description and you have to calculate how much body surface area is burnt so see calculate the burned surface area for a patient with burn involving chest abdomen right arm right thigh it is the circumferential burn guys tell me what is the correct answer waiting for your reply yes and you have to be careful it is not right limb it is arm forearm arm forearm so in right upper limb or left upper limb there is arm and there is forearm it is not right lower limb it is only right thigh it is not right lower limb it is right thigh let me check how many of you mark the correct answer dr kf s a mishra rupa kumari sush priya saha priya saha dhruvi patel parth patel very good so majority of you mark the correct answer majority of you mark the correct answer okay guys so majority of you mark the correct answer now it's very easy let's check what chest how much percentage for chest guys you know chest 9% abdomen 9% right thigh 9% right arm right upper limb divided into arm and forearm for each it is 4.5 so what it is 4.5% so this is what guys this is 4.5% clear it is 4.5% so total how much it is 31.5 this is 31.5 okay guys so it is 31.5 31.5 right so see here you can see nowadays clear now see nowadays the this kind of question is asked so what you have to remember you have to exactly see what word is mentioned now see this is rule of 9 given by valles so the smaller surface areas in the body corresponds to 9% so what head and neck 9 upper limb 9 rest everything is 18 18 means chest abdomen 18 back 18 lower limb 18 now just divide this chest abdomen chest plus abdomen chest 9 abdomen 9 back upper back lower back so upper back 9 lower back 9 upper limb 9 so anterior aspect of upper limb 4.5 posterior aspect of upper limb 4.5 in upper limb arm and forearm so arm 4.5 forearm arm 4.5 forearm 4.5 suppose you are going to divide the lower limb 18% so leg and thigh thigh 9 leg 9 suppose i'm asking you how much is the body surface area in anterior aspect of thigh tell me in the comment box guys tell me anterior aspect of thigh anterior aspect of thigh how much anterior aspect of thigh yes 4.5 easy right so guys everybody is correct somebody is asking lund and browder chart or rule of 9 which one is better for adults rule of 9 for children we are going for lund and browder chart which is more accurate children lund and browder chart is more accurate for adults we are going for rule of 9 okay now next question guys tell me what is the correct answer a 4 years old child brought to the hospital with right non palpable testis so in the scrotum there is no testis it's non palpable during diagnostic laparoscopy for undescended testis blind testicular vessels were seen what should be done next waiting for your reply what should be done next jaya bishnu priya pcm rajat bhomik shalini sharad yadav hiba everybody is correct guys see whenever there is undescended testis you know what are the types of undescended testis it is palpable if it is palpable it is in inguinal canal how many percentage 80% if it is non palpable it is in abdomen clear if it is palpable undescended testis investigation of choice inguinal exploration if it is non palpable what we go for diagnostic laparoscopy 
whenever we are performing diagnostic laparoscopy we have to trace the vas deferens if you trace the vas deferens vas deferens is blind if vas deferens is blind testis may or may not be present but we are going to trace testicular artery if testicular artery is blind it means there is testicular agenesis if testicular artery is blind it means patient is having testicular agenesis and if there is no testis obviously nothing should be done we have to abandon the procedure so what is the correct answer here correct answer nothing should be done okay guys clear so what you have to remember trace the vas deferens if it is blind testis may or may not be present trace testicular artery if testicular artery is blind it means there is testicular agenesis clear next guys this was an image based question asked in a latest exam the given below device is what is the correct answer the given below device is what is the correct answer guys tell me waiting for the reply yes paras kapoor achra shukla anushka shivanya nitin tania everybody is correct so obviously it is pneumatic compression stockings or pneumatic compression devices to prevent dvt this is used for dvt prophylaxis and this is most commonly performed most commonly used method so this is most commonly used method in which patients we are using it suppose patient cannot be mobilized especially the patients who are obese or the patients in whom some pelvic surgery is, is done in those cases we are using these pneumatic compression devices clear so it is used to prevent dvt everybody mark the correct answer for this question very good pneumatic compression devices clear next guys tell me what is the correct answer which of the following is true statement for full thickness and split thickness skin graft first to tell me what is the name of split thickness skin graft what is the other name of stsg and ftsg split thickness skin graft full thickness skin graft what's the name other name other name yes majority of you are marking the correct answer so split thickness skin graft what is the other name this is known as thiersch and full thickness skin graft this is known as wolfs clear now what is primary contraction what is secondary contraction in split thickness skin grafting we are taking epidermis plus part of dermis in full thickness skin grafting you take epidermis plus full thickness of dermis so if dermis content is thicker in full thickness there will be recoil just after harvesting if the graft is going to coil this is known as primary contraction on maturation of graft if it is going to contract that is secondary contraction so thicker grafts are going to coil just after harvesting so obviously primary contraction it is more with full thickness skin graft you can see here primary contraction is more with full thickness skin graft secondary contraction is more with split thickness skin graft so 2 and 3 these are correct 1 and 4 are incorrect so correct answer for this question 2 and 3 clear guys so everybody mark the correct answer and i'm telling you sometimes in exam examiner is not going to mention primary and secondary if examiner is going to ask a simple question graft contraction is significant in split thickness skin graft or full thickness skin graft what will you mark tell me in the chat box in exam the question is asked graft contraction is significant in nothing is mentioned what will you mark full thickness or split thickness tell me in the comment box guys graft contraction if nothing is mentioned yes split thickness because we are talking about maturation until and unless primary word is not mentioned suppose primary graft contraction is there then mark full thickness if nothing is mentioned examiner is talking about the ultimate appearance it is secondary contraction got it so i'm repeating primary contraction more in full thickness in skin graft secondary contraction 
more in split thickness skin graft how to remember secondary s is more common in s secondary contraction more common in s s t s g this is the graft contraction real one got it so primary contraction more in full thickness secondary contraction more in split thickness nothing is mentioned graft contraction more in split thickness poor cosmetic appearance more, yes poor cosmetic appearance again split thickness clear so i hope it is clear now yes because somebody is telling me yes full thickness has better cosmetic results because the graft contraction is not significant which one secondary so correct answer for this question guys b next easy question tell me what is the correct answer here there are two hidden questions 64 years old male underwent coronary artery bypass grafting which graft we took graft from long syphilis or great syphilis vein so one of the most commonly used vascular graft you know long syphilis vein the patient is now complaining of lack of sensation or medial aspect of leg and foot associated with heel pain so now patient is having neuralgia why because during harvesting of the long syphilis vein you injured one nerve tell me guys which nerve most likely injured nerve yes obviously everybody is marking the correct answer everybody syphilis nerve so syphilis nerve injured during stripping of long syphilis vein Sural nerve injured during stripping of short syphilis vein. So this is <coughs> asked in relation to varicose vein also. Syphilis nerve injured during harvesting of long syphilis vein. Sural nerve injured during harvesting short syphilis vein. So correct answer for this question A. There is another question which is asked in relation to vascular graft. Tell me. What is the most preferred vascular graft for CABG? Waiting for your reply. Guys, most preferred vascular graft for CABG. Waiting for your reply. Most preferred. Yes. PCM, Shalini. Very good. Very good. Chandrakant. Very good. It is Lima. Vishnu Priya. Left internal memory artery. You know that arterial grafts are better than venous graft. Why? Because of longer patency rate. Why? You know that arterial grafts are having non-collapsible lumen. Venous grafts are having collapsible lumen. So during systole it is going to open. During diastole it is going to collapse. Clear? But most commonly used because of extra length most commonly used it is long syphilis vein. So here correct answer is A. Next. We are expecting this question because from the last two, three years, this question came in each and every exam. What's the question? What is the correct order? Correct order of hypospadias correction. Guys, tell me, what is the correct order? Correct order of hypospadias correction. Tell me. Let me see who is the genius over here. Kashish S. One person only. Kashish S. Anita Shukla. Muthu Kumar MK. Lipun R. Dark Knight. Dr. AJ Chaudhary. PCM. Vishnu Priya. Dr. Goofy Do. Goofy Do. Clear? Okay. Starry Sky. Guys, how to remember? It's very easy. See, what is the correct order? First, correct order of hypospadias correction. By this mnemonic, you will not forget and you can mark all the questions correctly related to this. How to remember? Mnemonic is do your meatoplasty with GPS. Do your meatoplasty with GPS. Clear? D. Degloving. O. Orthoplasty. Orthoplasty means straightening of penis. Sometimes in the option, they give you this option straightening orthoplasty means straightening of penis you are urethroplasty meatoplasty meatoplasty g glenuloplasty p penoplasty s crotoplasty so do your meatoplasty with gps clear guys see the question do so this is first 
वन ओ ऑर्थोप्लास्टी योर यूरेथ्रोप्लास्टी मिएटोप्लास्टी एंड ग्लैनुलोप्लास्टी सो इट इज वन फाइव थ्री टू फोर वॉट इज द करेक्ट एंसर ए आई एम रिपीटिंग अगेन वी आर एक्सपेक्टिंग दिस क्वेश्चन बिकॉज फ्रॉम द लास्ट टू थ्री इयर्स इन मेनी एग्जाम्स दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज आस्ट सो वॉट डू योर मिएटोप्लास्टी विथ जी पी एस डी ग्लविंग ऑर्थोप्लास्टी डी ग्लविंग ऑर्थोप्लास्टी यूरेथ्रोप्लास्टी मिएटोप्लास्टी ग्लैनुलोप्लास्टी पिनोप्लास्टी एंड स्क्रोटोप्लास्टी ओके गाइज clear next again we are expecting this question because last year it was asked in neat pg it was asked in fmg it was asked in inict classify the ceap category first guys tell me what is the full form of ceap this is for chronic venous disorders c clinical signs and symptoms e etiological classification etiological a anatomical distribution anatomical distribution and p pathophysiological dysfunction pathophysiological dysfunction so this is ceap clinical etiological classification anatomical distribution pathophysiological dysfunction so what is the eczema according to c according to c what is eczema guys tell me what is eczema yes let me check how many of you mark the correct answer shivangi singh very good paras kapoor shivanya pratyusha anik mondal pranav mohanan shivangi very good guys it is c4a have a look it's very easy to remember the category is from c0 clear zero means it is zero so whenever there is no visible or palpable sign it is zero the changes are going to start in c1 and in c1 what kind of changes patients are having telangiectasia reticular vein varicose vein develops in c2 and after that complication starts so after varicose vein in c3 there is edema c4a patients are having pigmentation and or eczema c4b there is lipodermatosclerosis and or white atrophy c5 healed wound c6 open wound let me tell you in exam they are not asking c0 c1 they know that you know c0 c1 c0 means nothing no visible or palpable sign c1 means telangiectasia or reticular vein c5 healed wound c6 open wound they are asking c2 c3 c4a c4b so varicose vein starts c2 edema develops c3 complications pigmentation and or eczema c4a and when lipodermatosclerosis are there patient is having white atrophy clear so what happens these patients are having c4b okay does delayed wound healing present with varicose yes yatri p why is there delayed wound healing it's not a risk factor for wound healing what is the problem there is ambulatory venous hypertension chronic ambulatory venous hypertension because of that there is complication clear so actually it is not going to lead to impaired wound healing clear guys so i hope you remember this question is expected next tell me what is the correct answer here 10 years old boy with perineal injury brought to the emergency now see guys patient didn't pass urine blood was present at meatus bladder was palpable next step first you tell me guys what's the diagnosis what is the diagnosis there is blood at meatus urinary retention blood at meatus urinary retention so everybody knows that this is a case of urethral injury now i'm asking which one this is anterior urethral injury or posterior urethral injury let me see who is the genius over here on the basis of injury itself you can tell me this is anterior urethral injury or posterior urethral injury let me see who is the genius bishnu priya very good bishnu priya yashashwini yashashwini 
नाइट बशीर के एफ पारस कपूर गाइस वेन एवर देर इज पेरिनियल इंजरी यस फॉल इन टू मैन होल क्लियर वेन एवर दब समबडी इज राइडिंग द बाइसिकल देर इज इंजरी सो पेरिनियल इंजरी वॉट काइंड ऑफ मैकेनिज्म यू कैन सी मैन होल इंजरी हियर देर इज इंजरी टू बल्बर यूरेथ्रा यू कैन सी दिस इज द साइकिल रॉड and what happens it is going to crush the bulbar urethra against pubic symphysis so in these cases in this image you can see the patient is having urinary retention and whenever you are suspecting urethral injury what is the gold standard management insert spc so what you do insert spc supra pubic catheter this is supra pubic cystostomy so what is the gold standard management supra pubic cystostomy so can you see guys wait and watch incorrect wait for bladder to fill and urge to urinate bladder is already distended foley's catheter insertion not done in all cases because sometimes if there is partial tear it can convert it into full thickness complete tear so gold standard is supra pubic cystostomy doesn't matter whether patient is having anterior urethral injury or patient is having posterior urethral injury we go for supra pubic cystostomy somebody already replied investigation of choice so if a single investigation you want to do you can go for rgu retrograde urethrogram this is not mandatory in emergency we can go for spc without this investigation also clear guys so correct answer is c bladder rupture urethral injury every year we expect one question from this <coughs> next 25 years old patient presents with multiple injuries again we are expecting this question and you know the answer multiple injuries due to road traffic accident two days later means after 48 hours patient developed dyspnea petechial rash altered sensorium which of the following is the cause and let me tell you where is the petechial rash rash in the axilla on the chest wall in the conjunctiva and in the retina axilla chest wall conjunctiva retina everybody is marking the correct answer guys it is fat embolism why because of fracture of long bones so long bone fracture characteristically these patients are going to develop altered sensorium after admission to hospital usually after 2 days of 48 hours so this you have to remember these are the clues after 2 days of 48 hours another characteristic feature what petechial rash clear guys so everybody is correct fat embolism why not air embolism usually for air embolism during surgery suppose patient is we are going to perform surgery thyroidectomy in head up position so during that if there is avulsion of some vein air embolism can occur during penetrating trauma air embolism can occur thromboembolism for this there will be history of what prolonged immobilization history suggestive of dvt so within 2 days thromboembolism chances are rare massive hemorrhage this is not responsible for petechial rash guys so correct answer correct answer is d everybody is correct next tell me what is the correct answer this is one of the famous question being asked repeatedly on removal of which gland sub mandibular gland and its duct which of the following nerve is most commonly injured guys which of the following nerve is most commonly injured puja mujahid chandrakant aspirant yatri anita shukla purva shrivastava purvi patel everybody is correct why because you know the relation which relation you can see in this image you can see that this is the submandibular gland and this is the duct you can see here the gland and specially its duct it is in close relation with which nerve lingual and which another nerve the duct is in relation to hypoglossal nerve so whenever we are going for submandibular gland surgery surgery related to submandibular gland duct most commonly injured nerve that is lingual second most commonly injured nerve hypoglossal clear guys so most commonly injured nerve all of you are correct lingual this is most commonly injured hypoglossal second most commonly injured hypoglossal that is second most commonly injured clear next again easy question guys tell me what is the correct answer 
फोर आवर्स बिफोर विजिटिंग कैजुअलिटी पेशेंट हिट्स हिज लेग ऑन एग्जामिनेशन दे वॉज पेन ऑन पैसिव स्ट्रेचिंग एंड डिस्टल पल्सेज वर पैल्पेबल दिस इज द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर वॉट देर इज पेन ऑन पैसिव स्ट्रेचिंग क्लियर पेन ऑन पैसिव स्ट्रेचिंग दिस इज द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर लेट मी सी हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर मार्किंग करेक्ट आंसर एवरीबडी इज मार्किंग करेक्ट आंसर टिपिकल फीचर ऑफ कंपार्टमेंट सिंड्रोम यू नो दैट वॉट इज द लेट साइन इन कंपार्टमेंट सिंड्रोम टेल मी गाइज आई एम गिविंग इन द ऑप्शन पैरालिसिस और पल्सलेसनेस गाइज टेल मी विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज लेट साइन पैरालिसिस और पल्सलेसनेस लेट साइन प्रणव मोहनन प्रणव मोहनन वेरी गुड यशस् यशस्विनी स्नेहा नवीन प्रभु गाइज लेट साइन पल्सलेसनेस दिस इज द मिस्टेक यू डू लेट साइन पल्सलेसनेस इज द लेट साइन एंड इन प्रीवियस एग्जाम दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज आस्ट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इंपोर्टेंट्स वर्स प्रोग्नोसिस टेल मी वर्स प्रोग्नोसिस इन कंपार्टमेंट सिंड्रोम विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज एसोसिएटेड विथ वर्स प्रोग्नोसिस गाइज टेल मी पैरालिसिस और पल्सलेसनेस वर्स प्रोग्नोसिस आई एम वेटिंग फॉर रिप्लाई पैरालिसिस और पल्सलेसनेस it is not the same answer nihal it is paralysis guys paralysis this is associated with worse prognosis so be careful in exam the late sign is pulselessness distal pulses might be palpable in compartment syndrome because over the vessel what kind of pressure is there extrinsic pressure so distal pulses might be palpable but the worse prognosis paralysis paralysis is associated with worse prognosis clear so what is the correct answer guys compartment syndrome why not necrotizing fasciitis in necrotizing fasciitis there should be necrosis of what structures up to the fascia why not burgess disease in burgess disease there is no pain on passive stretching it is characterized by thrombangitis obliterans here what typically seen in young male smokers it is not related to trauma deep venous thrombosis it is related to prolonged immobilization clear guys clear okay so majority of you are correct correct answer is a now let me tell you the special features of this particular disease compartment syndrome the classical picture what you have to remember there is severe pain out of proportion to clinical findings and it worsens with time despite of appropriate analgesia why because here the pain is because of ischemia and if you are going to examine the limb it reveals tense compartment with passive flexion and there is extension of muscles causing pain so pain on passive stretching presence of we discussed that palpable pulses does not rule out compartment syndrome we discussed that what pulselessness it's a late sign okay yes we can save the limb with timely intervention you know if there is compartment syndrome we perform fasciotomy we release the pressure and fasciotomy is done on both aspect lateral as well as medial this question is expected or a similar question is expected in iict guys tell me what is the correct answer after trauma patient was having spontaneous eye opening with tracheostomy means verbal response cannot be assessed not able to move his right upper limb but localizes pain in left upper limb clear tell me guys what is the correct answer majority of you are marking the correct answer so what are the components of gcs glasgow coma scale it is evm eye opening verbal response and m it is best motor response what you have to remember best motor response so you can see here that patient is not able to move his right upper limb can anybody tell me why why this patient is not able to move his right upper limb anybody can tell me why this patient is not able to move his right upper limb tell me guys can anybody tell me why this patient is not able to move his right upper limb yes guys easy question no paralyzed no trauma patient 
what there is a fracture in the limb there is a fracture in the limb that's why he is not able to move because patient is trauma patient and if you see in the left upper limb patient is able to localize the pain that's why it is the best motor response so you can, guys you can see e4 spontaneous eye opening v verbal response it is non testable vnt and m5 so what is the total score it is 9 vnt previously for a non testable parameter additional score was added for the final score so previously it was 10 but nowadays the latest recommendation says that for a non testable parameter you are not going to add one score to the final score so it is 9 maximum you have to mention nt in front of non testable parameter so the parameter which is non testable you write it suppose this option is not there if this option is not there then you have to go for 9 clear so guys gcs every year there is a question you can see e4 spontaneous eye opening e3 to loud voice previously it was to the speech e2 to pain or pressure e1 no response here v v5 is oriented v4 disoriented or confused v3 inappropriate words or sounds inappropriate words v2 incomprehensible or sounds v1 no response and you know m6 when patient obeys command m5 localizes pain withdrawal to pain m4 abnormal flexion posturing m3 extension m2 no response m1 i know lots of you struggle with gcs so how to remember see eye opening you can easily remember because there are four components only e4 spontaneous e1 no response e3 to loud voice or speech e2 to pain how you can remember verbal response mnemonic is one confused word sounds nowhere one confused word sounds nowhere clear guys so oriented this is v5 confused this is v4 if patient is able to speak in a word inappropriate word e3 incomprehensible sounds v2 and if there is no response v1 how to remember the best motor response obey commands mnemonic is here the mnemonic is obey commands obey localities obey localities with flexion and extension i'm writing it here obey localities with flexion and extension i'm writing it here obey localities with flexion and extension flexion and extension clear guys so obey commands m6 localizes pain 5 withdrawal to pain v4 flexion posturing v3 extension posturing oh sorry m4 flexion m3 extension posturing m2 and no response m1 clear guys so one confused word sounds nowhere obey localities with flexion and extension this is the best way how you can easily remember it and if you can practice multiple times you will remember it for very long clear now next again we are expecting this question and let me tell you whenever you can see any pressure ulcer or sore and if you can see the bone if you can see the bone which is available clear so if you can see the bone available obviously it is what it is grade 4 or sometimes stage 4 grade 4 or sometimes stage 4 so guys 73 years old male bedridden for 15 years i hope you have seen such patients in emergency the patients who are bedridden for very long they have what bed sore especially over sacrum and you have seen some of the surgery resident who is doing debridement the bone is exposed so this is grade 4 this is grade 4 here you can see exposed bone this grading is very very important you have to remember so pressure ulcer staging or grading in stage one what happens here there is only erythema of skin only erythema in stage two what happens there is partial thickness skin loss including epidermis you can see here partial thickness skin loss including epidermis in stage three full thickness skin loss involving subcutaneous tissue and whenever there is full thickness skin loss including 
subcutaneous tissue apart from that muscle and bone it is also involved that is stage 4 clear so if you see the muscle or bone it is stage 4 subcutaneous tissue 3 only epithelium it is injured or damaged you can see here there is partial thickness loss stage 2 and if only redness or erythema is there that is stage 1 clear guys next tell me what is the correct answer here guys what is the correct answer <clears throat> see 30 years old cab driver involved in an accident he is brought to emergency with complaints of breathlessness on examination pulse rate 110 BP 90 by 60 unstable vitals temperature 37 degree extensive bruising is noted on right side of chest there is extensive bruising urgent bedside chest x-ray was done best management can you see first guys tell me what is the frac what is the diagnosis guys i'm waiting for your reply tell me what is the diagnosis what is the diagnosis guys you can see easily first person to reply correctly saket samarth second borodin hunsdicker it is flail chest what is the definition two or more than two ribs what kind of two or more than two consecutive ribs fractured at two or more than two places two or more than two consecutive ribs fractured at two or more than two places that is flail chest if patient is having flail chest we can go for what analgesia we can go for physiotherapy but if patient is having evidence of respiratory failure what is the treatment of choice if there is respiratory failure in that case we go for intermittent positive pressure ventilation clear guys so we go for intermittent positive pressure ventilation so can you tell me what's the problem here patient is complaining of breathlessness vitals are unstable pulse rate 110 bp 90 by 60 what is the correct answer obviously we are not going for thoracotomy not going for chest tube insertion no fluid restriction no fluid restriction what what's the correct answer guys elective intubation with intermittent positive pressure ventilation okay so see the problem first we discuss the definition what is the flail chest two or more than two consecutive ribs fractured at two or more than two places clear now coming to the treatment traditionally what mechanical ventilation was used to internally splint the chest right but what currently what's the treatment oxygen administration adequate analgesia and physiotherapy ventilation in which cases it is reserved whenever patient is having respiratory failure despite of adequate analgesia and oxygen right in which cases we go for stabilization of flail segment only in the selected group of patient where patient is having isolated or severe chest injury and patient is also having pulmonary contusion so what you have to remember flail chest what is the treatment adequate analgesia oxygen administration and physiotherapy clear in which cases we are going for intermittent positive pressure ventilation intermittent positive pressure ventilation if patient is having respiratory failure okay guys next tell me this is one of the frequently asked question frequently asked guys tell me what's the correct answer 25 years old patient with road traffic accident brought to the emergency after road traffic accident patient respiratory rate 35 per minute bp 100 by 60 difficulty in speaking sentences means having breathlessness on percussion hyper resonance note fast performed it was normal miss abdomen related problem was not there chest x-ray given below what's the next immediate step see the chest x-ray see the chest x-ray and tell me what's the diagnosis so all of you mark the correct answer yes you can see guys in this case can you see here yes here you can see yes this is a part of lung so lung is collapsed here there is presence of air so this patient is having tension pneumothorax how to compare if you see the level of diaphragm this is depressed so the level of diaphragm it is depressed so this is tension pneumothorax and how we manage 
immediate step, put a wide bore needle in second intercostal space in mid clavicular line in children and in the fifth intercostal space in anterior axillary line in adults. And the treatment of choice, we have to insert ICD where in both children and adults in the fifth intercostal space. So, everybody is correct, everybody is correct guys, correct answer is B. What we have to go for? We have to go for wide bore needle insertion in fifth intercostal space, see the age adult patient followed by ICD insertion in fifth intercostal space, clear? So, this is the correct answer. Okay. Now, what is the characteristic feature? Suppose we are going for how to make the diagnosis. Actually speaking, the diagnosis of flail chest as well as diagnosis of tension pneumothorax, it is clinical. What is the diagnosis? Both flail chest as well as tension pneumothorax, it is clinical. You have to remember guys this question. It is not mid axillary line, it is anterior axillary line. In the books it is written anterior to mid axillary line. So, it is anterior axillary line. So, diagnosis of flail chest as well as tension pneumothorax, it is clinical and the most characteristic feature suppose x-ray is done, depressed diaphragm you can see because of increased pressure there is depressed diaphragm. Let me see how many of you are going to mark this question correctly. Guys, tell me, mesh used for hernioplasty. Mesh used for hernioplasty. Tell me, guys. Wow, it's wonderful, wonderful. Majority of you are marking correct answer. Let me tell you. For the hernia surgery, whenever we are going for hernioplasty, the mesh, preferred mesh should be lightweight and large pore, clear? It should be lightweight and large pore. What is the advantage of lightweight and large pore meshes? These are having better tissue integration. There is less shrinkage, more flexibility and improved discomfort, improved comfort. So, what happens? Better tissue integration because of large pore. Clear? So, lightweight large pore meshes are used. In one of the latest exam, they asked, what is the weight of lightweight? What is the weight of heavyweight meshes? Guys, can you tell me what is the weight? Let me see who is genius over here. Weight of lightweight meshes. Weight of heavyweight meshes. Lightweight, first person to reply correctly, med. Med, first person to reply correctly. It is less than 40 gram per meter square. PCM correct. And what is the weight of heavy weight? Mid, very good. More than 80 grams per meter square. Guys, this question was asked. So, lightweight mesh, it is light, less than 40 gram per meter square. Heavy weight is heavy weight mesh, heavy, more than 80 gram per meter square. And again, remember, Lightweight, large pore meshes are preferred. Clear? Let us discuss the meshes because these are asked frequently in exam. So, see, the meshes can shrink up to 50 percent, right? And in some cases, even more. So, mesh with thinner strand and the larger spaces between them, it is going to allow the better tissue integration. These are known as lightweight, large pore meshes. And these lightweight, large pore meshes preferred because of better tissue integration, less shrinkage, more flexibility and comfort. So, you know, light weight kitna, how much is the weight? Less than 40. Heavy, how much is the weight? More than 80. Suppose we are going to put a mesh, right? All around the margin of defect, at least how much margin should be covered? So, they said that at least 2 centimeter but up to 5 centimeter if possible. So, around the defect, whenever we are applying the mesh, at least 2 centimeter defect is covered and around 5 centimeter if possible. Suppose we are going for inlay repair, whenever you are going to put the mesh or apply the mesh to the edges of defect. So, it is not recommended. Why? Because it is having higher recurrence rate. So, the things which you have to remember for hernioplasty, we prefer lightweight large pore meshes, Weight in lightweight less than 40, 
weight in heavy may heavy weight meshes more than 80 guys this is another question which is asked frequently tell me what is the correct answer what is the correct answer it's very very easy question q sofa use for sepsis what is the full form quick sequential organ failure assessment how to remember there is a mnemonic qrsms qrsms q means q so far r means respiratory rate how much more than 22 per minute s means systolic blood pressure how much less than equal to 100 mmhg clear and ms means mental status alteration these are the three parameters mental status alteration how you assess mental status alteration by gcs clear guys by gcs so systolic blood pressure respiratory rate neurological status one two four these are correct so what is the correct answer guys the correct answer is b correct answer is b clear so majority of you are correct again i'm telling you we are expecting a question from gcs from q so far in this exam so how to remember qrs ms q means q so far r means respiratory rate S means systolic blood pressure and MS mental status alteration. Clear guys? Next. You know that sometimes they ask image based questions related to instruments also, especially in the gynae, in the surgery, they ask the instruments. Can you tell me? This instrument, it is having a tooth and a groove and it is having transverse serrations. Guys, tell me the name. Tooth and a groove and it is having transverse serrations though so that if you are going to catch something it is not going to slip you're going to catch something it is not going to slip guys what is the correct answer cockers very good everybody is correct it is cockers hemostatic forceps what is the use whenever you are performing mastectomy you are going to catch the bleeding vessels in tough tissues like palm and sole you are going to catch the bleeder so this is cockers See the important instruments which are asked in exam frequently. Important instruments. First, you can see this. This is Ramplage sponge holding forceps or sponge holder, which is having oval tip, long blade. What is the use? You can see serrations and fenestration. It is having long shaft Y for cleaning and for cleaning. And especially if there is some abscess cavity, we can put a gauze so we can do the swabbing of that abscess cavity this is cocker's hemostatic forceps how to identify there is a tooth groove transverse serrations you can see here tooth groove transverse serrations can you make see clear guys and here this is oval tip having serrations and fenestration ramp place now tell me what's the name of this one Guys, tell me what's the name of this one, which is having curved terminal part and fenestration. What's the name of this one? Easiest one. Easiest. Babcock's. This is Babcock's forceps. This is Babcock's. And can you tell me, see how much is the angle between the tip and the rest of the blade? How much is the angle? 90 degree, so what is the name? This is Mixter or Lahi. Mixter or Lahi. Right angle forceps. This is Mixter or Lahi. Right angle. Right angle forceps. Clear, guys? So, Mixter or Lahi. Right angle forceps. Clear? Let me see who is the genius over here. See the question. It's easy question. Surgical attendant or surgical resident completed a modified radical mastectomy for CA breast. You have to suture the wound using subcuticular sutures. Which of these sutures will you choose? What is the best thing about suture? You know, on the suture packet, the name is mentioned. Can you see the first one? If you see the first one, it is monocryl. Monocryl, what is the other name? Polyglycoprone. C, B. What is the B option? Vicryl. 
वाइक्रिल इज पॉलीग्लैक्टिन वॉट इज द ऑप्शन नंबर सी यू कैन सी है गाइज ऑप्शन नंबर सी इट इज सिल्क एंड ऑप्शन नंबर डी इट इज क्रॉमिक कैटगट सो फर्स्ट ऑप्शन मोनोक्रिल सेकेंड इज वाइक्रिल थर्ड इज सिल्क फोर्थ इज क्रोमिक कैटगट विच वन इज यूज त्रिलोक गौतम पार्थ पटेल प्रत्युषा यस गाइज वी आर यूजिंग मोनोक्रिल एंड वॉट इज द अदर नेम ऑफ मोनोक्रिल दिस इज पॉली ग्लाइकेप्रोन This is polyglycoprone. Polyglycoprone, clear? It is. What are the components? Glycolide, copolymer of glycolide per plus caprolactone. Caprolactone. So it is monocryl or polyglycoprone which is used for subcuticular suturing. See the other sutures. You know this is catgut. Catgut is not the catgut. It is sheep gut. Which layer? It is prepared from submucosa. Can you tell me what is the preservative used for catgut? Preservative used, you know, isopropyl alcohol. The preservative used isopropyl alcohol prepared from submucosa of sheep gut, submucosa of sheep psyllium. Vicryl copolymer of glycolide plus lactide. So it is also known as polyglactin. This is how it looks like. Vicryl. Okay, guys, you can see here. This is blue-colored. So, what's the name? Proline. What is the other name of proline? Polypropylene. Can anybody tell me what are the uses of proline suture? Guys, tell me. Polypropylene. It is proline. Can you tell me what are the uses? Uses of proline suture. Uses. Where you use this proline? we use proline mesh in hernia surgery so for proline mesh suturing you use the proline suture another indication vascular anastomosis another indication yashaswini very good rectus sheath so rectus sheath repair for vascular anastomosis for hernia surgery fixation of mesh we are using proline we are expecting questions from sutures also okay next Every year there is question related to color coding flow rate of cannula, color coding of folies. Tell me, this is pink, and you know the lotus is pink. Clear? You remember? G20 summit organized by BJP. BJP is having lotus. What is the color of lotus? Pink. Pink. G20. Guys, what is the correct answer? Everybody knows the answer. It is twenty gauge. Twenty gauge. Let me tell you one mnemonic. It was sent by one of my student. Clay is not mine. It's very easy to remember. So how to remember, guys? See first important points. Fourteen gauge. That is or orange. Sixteen grey. Eighteen green. Twenty pink. Twenty two is blue. Twenty four yellow. Twenty six it is violet or purple. Clear? So how to remember? O, oh, great God, please bless your people. O, oh, great God, please bless your people. O, oh, orange, G R great green, G G R grey, G green, P pink, B B blue, yellow, purple. Or violet. So here you have to start. It is fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. This is twenty. Blue twenty-two. Yellow twenty-four. Purple or violet twenty-six. Clear? Oh, great God! And second, guys, you have to remember the flow rate also. Orange twenty-two forty. Grey one eighty. Green ninety. Pink sixty ml per minute. Blue thirty-six. Yellow twenty and thirteen. Okay, right. So somebody was asking, sir, sir, please discuss the uses of sutures also. Okay, guys, let's discuss the uses of sutures. Right, quickly, let's discuss the uses. First, tell me what's the use of silk, guys? Silk. So you know, silk is for skin. Silk. This is for skin. For skin suturing, silk. After that, we use vicryl. You know, 
Vicryl, what is the use? It is for bowel anastomosis. This is for bowel anastomosis. Clear? Yeah. And what is the other role? Any organ in which there is stone forming tendency, there we use. So, how to remember? Mnemonic is cub. The organs with stone forming tendency, cub. C, CBD. U, ureter. B, bladder. So, CBD, ureter, bladder. We use vicryl. We discussed monocryl. Monocryl. Monocryl, it is for subcuticular suturing. Subcuticular, okay. We discussed proline. Proline, this is for rectus sheath. Proline, this is for rectus sheath. This is for vascular anastomosis. Vascular anastomosis, clear guys? Rectus sheath, vascular anastomosis, and we discussed to fix the mesh in hernia. Hernia surgery for mesh fixation. Okay. What is the role of nylon? Nylon suture. This is used for tendon. Tendon. What is the use of catgut or chromic catgut used for subcutaneous tissue? It is used for suturing of subcutaneous tissue. Clear? Clear, guys? So, I hope it's clear. Tendon, it's nylon. Anushka, for tendon, we are using nylon. Nylon suturing. It is used for tendons. Okay? Clear? Next. Next. Nutritional complications are more with which fistula. So, nutritional complications are seen in which organ? Yes, when the nutrients are present. So, in which organ nutrients are present? The food is present in stomach. The digestion starts from duodenum. So, nutrients are present in small intestine and it is said that, it is said that the proximal small bowel fistulas are having higher risk of nutritional complications. So, which fistula is having maximum risk of nutritional complications? Duodenal followed by jejunal followed by ileal. So, it is duodenal followed by jejunal followed by ileal. In colonic fistula, nutritional complications are not there. So, see how to remember proximal small intestinal fistulas are having maximum risk of nutritional complications. Clear guys? Correct answer is duodenal fistula. See. Next, let me see who is going to mark this question correctly. Guys, tell me, what is the correct answer here? Which of the following are true? Regarding number of nodes removed in each cancer for proper staging. True. Chandrakant, first person to reply correctly. Chandrakant, Dheeraj Pandey, second person, Apurva Srivastava, third, Yashashwini, T.S. Yashashwini, most of the times you are correct. Clear, yeah, guys, let me tell you. It's very easy to remember. So, there is a mnemonic. Number of lymph nodes removed for proper staging. How to remember? Mnemonic is GB crest. It is GB crest. G, gallbladder, how many? Six. B, breast, 10, C, colon and rectum, 12, E, esophagus, 15, ST, stomach, 16. So, gallbladder, 6, breast, 10, colon and rectum, 12, esophagus, 15, stomach, 16. Just remember this mnemonic, you will not forget. Chandrakant, very good Chandrakant. So, this is the mnemonic, guys. Clear? So, most of you are performing very good in the LRR. I hope that you are going to do extremely good in the upcoming INICT. Don't forget to just go for registration of this INICT championship exam. All the best from the whole prep ladder family. Keep studying, keep rocking. Definitely you are going to crack the exam with flying colors. Best of luck guys. Best of luck.